Welcome back for the second part of One Man's Faith today. Now we're going to change change gears here, and let's go, and we're going to go to our series we started last week called the Anointing, understanding the Anointing and looking at it. Um, and so let's turn to uh, Luke chapter four. And while you're doing that, let me just review review just a little bit. We were looking at the anointing that Jesus had. Uh, and, it's, and if we look at uh, Luke chapter 4, it says in uh, verse 16, it says, And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and as was his custom, he entered the synagogue on the Sabbath and stood up to read. And he took the, the prophet Isaiah, oh, and the, Stood up to read, and the book, <laughs> Miss saw that word, and the book of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. And he opened the book and found the place where it's written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set free those who are oppressed, to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord. And this is, this is kind of our, our, our key scripture as we go through the series. He says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he anointed me. So it's through the Holy Spirit that we become anointed. And we looked at the, we looked at the fact that Jesus was anointed. That's what gave him the oomph to carry out the things that he carried out. He didn't carry them out as the son of God with all the Godship characteristics. He wasn't omnipresent, he was not omniscient, and he wasn't omnipotent. Okay, he wasn't everywhere, he wasn't all-powerful, and he didn't know everything. All right, it, an example of that was when the lady touched him. He said, who touched me? See, he did not know. He came as a man. And he was baptized in the Holy Spirit and the anointing came upon him and it was through that anointing that he had the power to do all the things that he did. And he then passed that on to us and we looked at that also. He passed that on to us uh, and, and he told us in 1 John uh, chapter 2, John says in 1 John chapter 2, not in John, the gospel, but in 1 John chapter 2, he said, but you have an anointing from the Holy One and all things are known by you. You have an anointing. Jesus had the anointing and what gives us the hope that we have is the fact that Jesus was just like you and us, you and me, and he, he performed all that he did through the power of the Holy Spirit. And so we now have the anointing and we can do what he did. He says, hey, listen, greater works than these shall you do because I go to my Father in heaven. He says, you're going to do things, but you're going to go beyond me. You're going to do greater things than what I did. So he passed, he passed the anointing Onto them, and we and we looked at that, and we looked at how that started. And um, uh, today, I want to go and I want us to look look at um, following the anointing, following the 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 anointing. We have the anointing. Jesus had the anointing. He said, tag, you're it. He passed the anointing on us so that we could continue doing what he did. He said, as you go, preach, saying. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out demons. That's and and each one of those is a, is an imperative statement. So he's saying, you heal the sick, you cast out demons, you cleanse the lepers, you raise the dead. And we can't do that on our own. How is that done? Through the power of the Holy Spirit and the anointing that is placed upon us. And John tells us we have that, but. That doesn't do us any good unless we follow what the Holy Spirit tells us and we follow the anointing. 
As a matter of fact, if we back up in Luke chapter 4 to the first verse, it says, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led around by the Holy Spirit. He was led around by the Holy Spirit. Now, last week we too, we, we talked about what the anointing was. The anointing is like an inundation or uh, an overcoming or a downpour upon a person, smeared, being smeared with oil. Oil was used a lot of times in anointing people, uh, especially the high priest and the priest in the, in the Old Testament. As a matter of fact, the high priest, they took almost like a, a jar of oil and poured it over his head so that it ran down off his beard and onto all of him to, to indicate the anointing that he had in that, in that position. And we looked, we kind of finished up last week at looking at the anointing and the Holy Spirit are, the, are one and the same. In other words, having the Holy Spirit is having the anointing. But the Holy Spirit just in and of Himself is not the anointing. He, he is part of the Godhead. He comes in, He resides in us. He, we are then baptized by Him. Baptized into Him. Just like um, you're baptized in the water. Well, when you're baptized in water, you go totally under, and when you come back up, you know, all the water runs down and over you. Well, that's, that's, a, that's, that's the same type of thing in the spiritual that happens with the, with the baptism in the Holy Spirit, which is, can be the anointing. Um, and it was, the, it was, and if we, look at, if, if we look at that first verse in chapter 4 of Luke, it says, first he was filled, okay? He was filled, i.e., he was baptized in the Holy Spirit. And it's, that's a process of it coming into you and then, and then flowing out of you. We talked about that, having the rivers of living water that flow out from us. We talked about that last week. And we can say that he was led around by the Holy Spirit. And in this case, we can say by the anointing. He listened to and he followed. Jesus started doing what the Holy Spirit showed him to do. It, was, it said the Holy Spirit led him. In this case, in chapter 4, led him out into the wilderness to be tested. But he lived by being told what to do by the Holy Spirit. And because of that, the Holy Spirit worked, worked through him. In, in verse 14 of, of chapter 4, it says, Jesus returned in the power of the Holy Spirit. And, or we can also say that Jesus returned being led by the anointing. Right, he was led by the Holy Spirit. He allowed the Holy Spirit to show him where to go, what to do. He also said, I don't do anything that I don't see the Father do. Well, how does he see that? It's through this anointing that he has, the same anointing that we had. We're going to look at some things, and I want you to, I want you to see this. Being filled then leads to being led by the Holy Spirit, which then in turn leads to supernatural events happening. You see, your and my world should be a supernatural world, not natural. The supernatural supersedes. I don't know if any of you have ever watched Sid Roth, but he always says, and it's welcome to my world, which is naturally supernatural. Now, Sid Roth is a, is, is a Jewish believer of Jesus, um, and he and he's, he 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 has a a, a talk show, uh, I believe on Daystar, um, and and he's always interviewing people and how the Holy Spirit is working is working through them. But he says, "My world is naturally supernatural. Our world should be naturally supernatural, and it can be if we'll allow ourselves to be led by the Holy Spirit." 
Let's look at a couple examples. In Acts, in Acts chapter 6 is one, is one we can start with. It says, now at this time while the disciples, this is verse 1, and now at this time while the disciples were increasing in number, a complaint arose on part of the Hellenistic Jews against the native Hebrews because their widows were being overlooked in the daily serving of food. So the twelve summoned the congregation of the disciples and said, it is not desirable for us to neglect the word in order to serve tables. Therefore, brethren, select from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit. Who's he talking to now? He's talking to the believers, the disciples, okay? Those that were now, you see, by this time, there were 8,000 in Jerusalem, okay? The first day was 3,000, and then it said 5,000 were added. And so it, and it goes on and says daily people were being added. But there's two numbers mentioned, 3,000 and then additional 5,000. So there were at least 8,000. It was a mega church. And there are many places where there were mega churches in, in the Middle East. Okay? But the apostles said, we need to be applying ourselves to the Word of God. So you do this congregation, you the disciples, you pick men, look, of good reputation. If they're saying, if he has to say that, that must mean there must be some that don't have a good reputation, right? So he says, pick men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit. Full of the Holy Spirit. And he says, we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And they said the statement found approval with the, with the congregation, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit. That's how they, they talk about Stephen. They chose Philip, Prochorus, uh, Nicanor, Timon, and Parmenas, and Nicholas, a proselyte from Antioch. And these they brought before the apostles, and after praying they laid hands on them. For their, for their new position as deacons of the church. Okay, let's just stop right there, and I've got to take a break. So grab a cup of coffee. I'll be right back. <laughs> 